video I'm gonna help you identify the grasses and the weeds that you might find in the lawn. It's gonna be very direct to the point. We're gonna get to it right now. Let's get started. I'm, I'm recording this as fall, so we're getting a lot of mature warm season plants as well as maybe some very young a cool season plant. So let's look at this one. And this one I love. We can, we can get them while they have gone to seed. This is a type of annual foxtail and you can see where the name comes from. I mean look at the the seed head there. Looks like a foxtail. Again when they're younger sometimes you can get down here and it's hard to see right now. But yeah you can see a little bit right right there where my fingers pointing. There's a little bit of a pinkish uh, part to the plant. This one is super mature. It'll be dying out soon from the cold weather but it's kind of got a bluish green tint to it i mean this one's turning brown i guess from the cooler weather but again seeing that seed head is a dead giveaway here's some smaller ones out here you can see what a foxtail looks like here's an example of crabgrass again very mature crabgrass going to be dying out soon from cold weather you get a, a look at the seed head of the crabgrass very thin seed head so like when you're Sometimes people will find Dallas grass, which has a much thicker stalk to it and, and doesn't even look anywhere close as far as the seed head goes. So it's an easy giveaway to, to not confuse crabgrass with Dallas grass. Crabgrass is an annual where a lot of times, you know, unless you live very far south, it may survive through the winter. Um, but anyway, this is crabgrass. We'll show you Dallas grass later, which is often confused with crabgrass. This is one that I just really don't like, but it's a, a tall one. This is broom sedge. Now it's not actually a sedge. Very difficult to control weed in the lawn. I use a product called Blindside. It gives pretty good results, but it is a very challenging weed. This is called broom sedge. This weed looks like a little clover. This is called yellow wood sorrel, also called oxalis. O X A L I S. It does have a little yellow bloom, likes the cooler temperatures in the fall or maybe in the spring. It's a weed, can be controlled with some of your broadleaf herbicides. I like to use a product called Change Up, it's a good one to knock this out. Usually, products that have 2,4 D in them not quite as effective on controlling this particular weed. People may get mad at me calling this weed. A weed is an unwanted plant. This is a think a morning glory vine they will get all up in the flower beds sometimes which can be a pain to, and they are difficult to control to be honest with you good example here of goose grass you can see the seed head on the goose grass it likes real compacted soil sometimes I like a product called dismiss NXT it's a post emergent hopefully you can get ahead of it with a pre-emergent control most of the goose grass I do run a weed control and fertilization business. Today's video is sponsored by Graham Spray Equipment. This is my Graham Spray Rig on the back of my truck. If you need a spray rig for your business, go to GrahamSE.com or give those guys a call. Now it looks like a first sign of a, a cool season weed here. Looks like some hen bit here that's, that's young. Again, getting down in the 50s at night, these cool season weeds can take off and start growing, but we still got plenty of warm season weeds as well. This will have a purple flower on it at some point. Hen bit's are fairly easy to recognize. Here also you got some spurge, very common weed in the summer. It multiplies super fast, so it's not necessarily a difficult weed to control or to kill, but it does multiply fast and can seemingly take over the lawn But how quickly uh, how many thousands of seeds it can produce. Looks like some dandelions starting to pop up here. Of course, later on we have a big yellow flower that's super easy to identify, um, but I believe this is a dandelion. There may be stuff called like a false dandelion. I don't know necessarily which one's a false one versus the real one, but I believe this is a dandelion. Looks like we might have some type of geranium here popping up. Looks a little different than what I'm used to. There's like a wild geranium and a Carolina geranium, I think, are a couple of the names that I've heard referred to. Maybe a better example of a dandelion right there. I did find some Dallas grass here, you can see. Uh, it definitely looks different than the crabgrass. Now this isn't a, a very impressive seed head. Sometimes it'll be much larger, but this is what the Dallas grass seed head looks like. Maybe a slightly better example of Dallas grass. You can see here the, the seed head on that one. I wanted to show you the carpet grass. Sometimes looks a little bit like centipede or maybe St. Augustine. But you see this is Bermuda grass lawn. You get over here and then there's carpet grass in there. And the seed head makes it very easy to identify because it's unique. You see how it has the Y at the top. 
with the one little kicker off to just one side and that's the seed head for carpet grass. Also uh, cool season weeds here you can see you've got wild onions and wild garlic typically uh, the way I tell them apart I mean usually the onions seem to be larger and, and not as many leaves to it but maybe a more official way if you do break it off uh, the plant, the leaf here, the on garlic it is hollow inside the, and uh, onion is, is a solid leaf there so I believe this one's actually wild garlic for the sake of the video I mean for controlling it we use blindside or anything with metzulfuron in there it can be slow to control but that's how we get rid of wild garlic and wild onions. There's a good example of cut weed right here it's a slow one to die. It, it's not difficult to control necessarily, but it just can take a while after the application. That might be what we call penny wart. I'm not 100% sure. It looks like a tiny little lily pad that mats up in the lawn. I wanted to point out there, you see, I didn't 100% know the name of that weed. And it's not important necessarily to know every weed. I'm hoping this video is helping you. And I want to do some more before we wrap up. Oftentimes you can categorize weeds in different categories. You got your sedges, which we're going to take a look at soon. You also got broadleaf weeds and then you got grassy weeds because a lot of times a particular herbicide will be effective on broadleaf weeds but maybe not sedges or on sedges but not broadleaf weeds or grass weeds and some of them can work on all of them. It's helpful to at least know what kind of category we're in you know and there's some that try to confuse you like broom sedge is not a sedge but they named it broom sedge. Not a good idea in my opinion. Let's show you some more weeds and then we'll get to the grasses as well. There's a little bit better example of the wild garlic. As far as sedges you know I like to think of them at least in terms of Kalinga and yellow nut sedge and purple nut sedge and that's about the level I understand. Now there's more than one type of Kalinga. I know there's like coxcomb Kalinga, false green Kalinga. You know, I, I don't know all the different ones that are in my area. Now, I'm not exactly sure which one this is. Kalinga and I guess there's one called Glo globe sedge. It's possible that's this one but I do know how to identify uh, the difference between the types of Kalinga and the yellow nut sedge and the purple nut sedge. So let's go take a look at those. And anybody wants to contribute in the comments that correct something I said wrong or maybe knows how to identify some of the things I'm not sure about, that would be helpful as well. This is a good example of what carpet grass looks like, a big patch of carpet grass in Bermuda. We use a product called Celsius to control carpet grass in a Bermuda lawn. Really good example of spurge here in this gravel area often grows in the cracks of the sidewalk as well. Other cooler weather this isn't the greatest time to look at some of these warm season weeds are already turning from the weather. This is called Lespediza. It looks kind of like spurge meaning it grows real low and it, it can mat up even thicker and it's more difficult to control in some ways. Change Up's a great product to use on spurge as well as Lespediza but there is a difference. This one's a woodier plant you can just even feel it like trying to break off a piece of it. It's just stronger if you will but they, they definitely have a different look to them. Now, this one can really get thick in the lawn and, and take over. It's often uh, very common in centipede lawns. Perhaps our best example of Dallas grass that we've seen so far. And with the nut sedge, this one's yellow nut sedge. You can see the the leaf does have a lighter color than when we compare it with the purple nut sedge, but also it grows more upright and also has a finer point on the end of it there. You compare that with the purple nut sedge, it tends to lay a little flatter, it's got a darker leaf and not quite as fine of a point on the end. I believe this is purple and you can see the yellow beside it standing more upright and a visibly lighter color leaf. Now there's definitely more weeds out here that we can look at but let's take a look at some of the grasses you'll find. Before that I'm going to show you a grass that can be a weed because an unwanted grass is also a weed if you take it by the literal definition. This is Bermuda grass as we get into fall still has some pretty good color in it which is great. I actually going to show you one more weed. Looks like some uh, Virginia buttonweed, a low growing vine very difficult to control in the lawn though you can suppress it with some products like blind side or change up Celsius these are good products to suppress it with all right so here's the Bermuda grass and I want to show you what the weedy part of it is see if you can notice the difference as I pan this way you can see how this is also Bermuda but it looks different this is some common Bermuda grass where this is a, a hybrid Bermuda that came from the sod farm and what's the difference? Well, you can see obviously just in the appearance is different. It just doesn't grow nearly as, as uniform. It also goes to seed much quicker. So it just not exactly the look you're going for, but there's a Bermuda grass seed head 
on the common Bermuda grass and you can see the hybrid Bermuda grass has been growing as well but not near as many seed heads now it has gone to seed um, right here but you look over it there's almost no seed heads when you get over here to the common it's just seed heads you know all, all throughout there so it just doesn't look nearly as good and so I would consider this a weed. Now, I don't know how to get rid of this other than just spraying it with glyphosate or something as far as getting common Bermuda grass out of a uh, hybrid Bermuda grass. And that's exactly what I did. I actually had a lot of big patches of common over here and I just sprayed them with glyphosate last summer, I believe, and it took a while where they filled in. But it looks like I might've missed this spot. As you see, we get over here, you got you got Bermuda grass. We get over here, and it has a slightly different look to it. And this is our zoysia, much more shade tolerant under these crepe myrtles, and would prefer sun as well. But it does okay now. The leaves are falling, but you can see it's it's doing uh, fairly well in this situation, even with limited sunlight. Uh, emerald zoysia is a very common fine leaf one that has uh, good shade tolerance some of the wider leaf ones in general not quite a shade tolerant there may be some exceptions to that z52 or Meyer zoysia a couple of the wider leaf ones that are seem to be common in our area let me show you this this is bermuda grass and actually had a big uh, patch of carpet grass here that was applied with celsius now it's going to take a little while for that bermuda to fill in but you can see there is bermuda filling in already where the carpet grass has died y'all help me out on these i've i forget the name of this this was such a huge weed i thought we should look at some of these i think are a thistle that have like the spiky leaves i'm not sure if this is a type of thistle if you know the name of this big giant guy with the real spiky leaves and it, it looks like it, it could be uh, the same one as that one maybe or it could be slightly different it might be some type of thistle but if you know the name of this it's about the flower uh, I'd love to hear it in the comments. There is a dandelion here, but the one I was also going to show you, and we'll get back to the grasses, is this one, and it looks like there, it's just kind of closing up shop for the winter. But this is called chamber bitter. It looks like a little mimosa tree, and it can really take over uh, a lawn as well. And all the leaves here, let's get a little closer. But this is an example of, of our St. Augustine grass here. And I think the leaves go to show it also has some shade tolerance as well a wider leaf blade here on the St. Augustine. And one thing about the St. Augustine grass, it, it does uh, tolerate shade fairly well, probably not quite as good as some of the, the uh, zoysia grasses. If you live with warm season grasses, those are probably your two of your better options. Bermuda's uh, terrible in the shade. And again, these grasses need sunlight. They probably prefer sunlight, but they will tolerate some shade. And here's the centipede grass out by the road. You can see, again, there's the seed head for centipede, which is much different than the carpet grass if you have trouble telling them apart. Again, one of the reasons you want to be able to tell them apart if you're going to apply Celsius to a centipede lawn and then you find out, well, I actually got about half carpet grass, but you did a Celsius application, it could really damage that part of your lawn that's carpet grass you know but if you had a little bit of carpet grass on a centipede lawn then you could apply celsius to it and hopefully knock out the carpet grass without damaging uh, the centipede so you need to be able to identify some of these before you make an application thanks for watching i hope this is helpful for you I want to mention a few resources out there i do do weed control and fertilization i also mentor people in that if you want to get into weed control and fertilization with warm season grasses we have an ongoing mentorship program we meet every other monday night for a, a class if you're interested in that there is a link in the description below to schedule a free call with me to talk about it see if it's a fit there's also at lawncarelife.com there's the Weed Control and Fertilization Academy. There's pricing charts. There's things to help people with their weed control and fertilization business. There's even a homeowner course out there for those that have a Bermuda and Zoysia lawn and want to know exactly what to do to take care of your Bermuda and Zoysia lawn. Uh, that's over at LawnCareLife.com under the homeowner section. Appreciate you watching. I'd ask you to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys in the next video.